Hi, um, I'm Lauren Lockwood. What food trucks can teach us about IT spend? Um, and this is a good follow-up, I think, to some of the other um, talks you've heard so far. So just first, um, a bit about me. Um, I uh, worked on starting a startup within government, which is probably, as <laughs> we think about legacy systems, maybe the, the worst for um, motivated change. Um, so uh, I, I actually did that under uh, Mayor Walsh here in, in Boston, and then since then I've um, started an organization to work with other nonprofits and, uh, and governments to sort of build capacity for digital transformation from within. So we'll get into a little bit of this um, specific example from, from Boston, but first I wanted to just get a little bit meta for a moment. So um, how we make decisions. So this is gonna seem pretty simple. Um, and, and here I'll talk a little bit about it with respect to how we spend IT dollars. So first, you observe something in the world. You know, why are, like, I observe that my child's shoes are sitting in the middle of the living room. Um, you then infer something from that. You tell a story about why you, why you see that happening. And so for me, you know, he was excited. He kicked the shoes off in a hurry to go play with his uh, new garbage truck. <laughs> um, and then uh, the third step is basically you make a decision based off of that inference. So. In this situation, it would be, all right, I should tell my son that he needs to put his shoes away before he can play with his, his toys. Um, in the IT world, it might look something like one observation could be that you're noticing with your online customers a sort of precipitous drop off when you ask them to provide their email address. Um, you may infer that people don't want to give their email address either because they don't want spam email or they just wish to remain anonymous. Then you might decide something like uh, we should allow people to um, check out as a guest, for example, to sort of eliminate that drop off. So we used that model uh, in Boston, the city of Boston, when we were developing technology. When we went to redesign this, the city's website, boston.gov, we looked at some of the most popular pages on the site. So some of these you might uh, seem obvious, right? So uh, city of Boston's a huge employer um, here in Boston, so job opportunities was a big one. Uh, looking at your trash collection schedule, property taxes, parking violations. These all make a lot of sense. Um, anybody want to guess what number one is? It's in the title of the talk. <laughs> Food truck locations. <laughs> By a lot. And so we were scratching our heads like, what the hell is going on here? Um, and so we applied the same type of decision making model that you would normally see elsewhere. So we observed food trucks are the most popular content on our website. We thought, you know, this makes sense, actually. We're issuing health inspections to these different food trucks. We're, we're sort of like the unique people that provide access to these, uh, who the trucks are and where they're going to be on a given day. And so our response was, you know, it's incumbent on us to build a better experience for the people who are clearly coming to Boston.gov to figure out where the, where the food trucks are. So in government, and I think in a lot of organizations, um, what we do next is sort of decide how we spend that IT, how we sort of execute on that um, decision. So we gather our requirements. In the case of food trucks, you can imagine it's, you know, we, we may want a map to, to show users like where the food trucks are gonna be. If one food truck decides to be somewhere else today, then we wanna be able to change the map. Um, you send it out to bid, you select a vendor, you spend a couple years and a couple million dollars implementing the solution. Um, but what we did in Boston was something a bit different because we were armed with a number. And I don't know if anybody knows where this number is going. 6% is the percentage of large IT projects uh, that are completed on pl as planned and meet users' needs. Um, this is not just specific to government. I've worked in many large organizations. Um, perhaps even more dismal, though, is 41% of these projects are completely abandoned after years, often, of investment. Um, so this is, as you can imagine, outrageous sums of money that are spent and, and thrown down literally a toilet each year, um, basically building things that aren't meeting users' needs. So instead of going through that normal process, what we did instead was we introduced a new model. We introduced a step three that was to bring users in to the process and understand how they experience something before we go out and build it. And this might sound obvious, um, it will sound obvious to people involved in more um, startup type environments, but this was entirely new in government. So we, we basically did was, we said, you know, I turned to some people on our team and I was like, have you ever gone to Boston.gov to figure out where food trucks are? And they said, no. And I said, I haven't either. So let's go down to City Hall Plaza and talk to some people waiting in line for food trucks. And so we went to the first person and we said, 
all right, you know, did you go to boston.gov to figure out what this food truck would be today? And she said, I use some app, I'm not sure what it's called. And so we're like, oh, that's interesting, okay, we don't have an app. Um, and so we went to the next person and said, uh, you know, uh, when you went to boston.gov, what, uh, what, what did you experience to find um, where the food trucks were? And she was like, I looked at some app called Street Food Boston. And so we're like, hmm, interesting, okay. Um, so we asked the third person that we talked to and uh, said, like, is there any chance you, talk, you use like an app to find where the food trucks are? And he said, yeah, I use an app called Food Trucks Boston. <laughs> and we're thinking to ourselves, like, what are the chances that, that no one's going to boston.gov for this information? Um, and I asked our developer to take a look at some of these apps and start looking at, like, where are they getting their information? And the answer was that they were scraping it off boston.gov. Um, and so <laughs> what we did instead was we looked at this new process. So we said, we're observing that food trucks are our most popular content. We inferred that boston.gov is the primary source for this very popular information. And our user research turned up that it's because third-party apps are scraping the website and driving up our analytics numbers for page hits. So the ultimate decision was not to build some fantastic user experience to replace all these third-party apps. Instead, what we build was an API to basically make it easier for these different apps to ingest the information. Um, so I use food trucks because it's kind of a fun example. Um, the, the, the numbers are, are not quite as fun. Um, and the, this is not just happening with food trucks. If we had gone down that path, you can imagine we would have built something very different and spent a lot of energy and money uh, in something that wasn't necessarily needed if people were getting it elsewhere. We, we see this happen a lot when users are not consulted throughout the course of the process, in the beginning, in the middle, um, and as you sort of iterate toward the end. Um, this is the reason why, uh, oh my gosh, that's grainy. Um, this is the reason why this is the screen people saw when they tried to sign up for the Affordable Care Act. It's because users were not brought into the process and it was not tested throughout the course of the development. It's why uh, SNAP recipients aren't getting the services they need. And it's why you're getting these like, like hair pulling madness uh, alerts when you try to um, do things like log into a simple website and you, and you say thing, it, it tells you something like, oh, you know, try, try a new login. And it's like, tell me something wrong. What was, the, what was the wrong with the first one I tried? So in our breakout session today, um, I think what we're gonna spend time talking about is um, I wanna hear from, from you all about your personal experiences. So. Um, how, uh, first of all, you've learned something that caused you to update your priors. Um, when was a time when you experienced something or interacted with an organization where you felt like your needs or the way you use a product or a service was not designed um, into the product itself? And compare that with the time when it was. So how easy it is, for example, to just order something on Amazon and have it, have it delivered to your door. I think what, what has been interesting is to look at the ways that that impacts your perception of the organization you're interacting with. So for government, um, a lot of that has to do with um, you know, how surprised people are when an interaction doesn't suck. Because um, frankly, most people expect it to. And so by, by including people um, in the design of a service or a product, how you can change their perception of your organization and their willingness to engage with it. Um, thank you.